Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the axilla. The axilla is a pyramidal space situated between the upper part of the arm and the chest wall. As you can see in this diagram, this is the axilla. It is a pyramidal space that is situated between the upper part of the arm and the chest wall. It resembles a four-sided pyramid and has the following parts. That is an apex, a base, four walls that is the anterior, posterior, medial and lateral wall. Now as you can see in this picture, this is the apex. This right here is the base. And the four walls are the anterior wall, the posterior wall indicated in yellow, the medial wall pink which is directed towards the body and lateral wall right here in pink that is directed away from the body. Now let's look at the boundaries in detail. First we look at the apex right here. The apex or the cervical axillary canal is directed upwards and medially that is towards the body. This is a specimen of the right scapula and the right clavicle and I have held this in the anterior view. Now, let's imagine the axilla as a pyramidal space right here with its apex at this point. Now, looking at the features of the apex, we have that it is bounded anteriorly by the posterior surface of the clavicle right here. It is bounded posteriorly by the upper border of the scapula and the medial aspect of the coracoid process as you can see here and it is surrounded medially by the outer border of the first strip right here. The oblique passage right here is called the cervical axillary canal, the axillary artery, the axillary vein and the brachial plexus enter through this canal that is the cervical axillary canal. Now noting the important points of the apex of the axilla or the cervical axillary canal, we have seen that it is directed upwards and medially towards the root of the neck. It is bounded anteriorly by the posterior surface of the clavicle, posteriorly by the superior border of the scapula and the medial aspect of the coracoid process, medially by the outer border of the first strip and the oblique passage is called the cervical axillary canal. The axillary artery, the axillary vein and the brachial plexus enter the axilla through this canal. Now let's look at the features of the base of the axilla in detail. The base of the axilla is directed downwards and is formed by the skin, superficial fascia and axillary fascia. It is directed convex upwards in congregance with the concavity of the axilla like this. Noting the important points in the base or the floor of the axilla, we have that it is directed downwards and is formed by the skin, the superficial fascia and the axillary fascia. It is convex upwards in congregance with the concavity of the axilla. Now let's look at the features of the anterior wall. The anterior wall of the axilla is formed by the pectoralis major in front, the clavipectoral fascia and the pectoralis minor. Noting the important points on the anterior wall of the axilla, it is formed by the pectoralis major in front, the clavipectoral fascia and the pectoralis minor muscle. This is an anterior view of the shoulder and this muscle right here is the pectoralis major. Next, we look at the features of the posterior wall shown in yellow. The posterior wall is formed by the subscapularis above the teres major and the latissimus dorsi below. Noting the important points of the posterior wall of the axilla, it is formed by the subscapularis muscle above, the teres major and the latissimus dorsi below. This is the subscapularis muscle. This is the posterior view of the body and this muscle right here is the latissimus dorsi. Nextly, we have the medial wall. The medial wall is convex laterally and is formed by the upper four ribs along with their intercostal muscles 
and the upper part of the serratus anterior muscle. Noting the important points of the medial wall of the axilla, it is convex laterally and is formed by the upper four ribs with their intercostal muscles and the upper part of the serratus anterior muscle. This is the serratus anterior muscle. Finally, let us look at the features of the lateral wall. The lateral wall is formed by the upper part of the shaft of the humerus in the region of the bicipital groove, the coracobrachialis and the biceps brachii muscles. Noting the important points of the lateral wall of the axilla, it is formed by the upper part of the shaft of the humerus in the region of the bicipital groove, the coracobrachialis muscle and the short head of the biceps brachii muscle. This is the coracobrachialis muscle. Now let us look at the contents of the axilla concised in six main points. Firstly, we have the axillary artery and its branches. Then comes the axillary vein and its tributaries, the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus, five groups of the axillary lymph nodes, the long thoracic and intercostobrachial nerves and finally the axillary fat and areola tissue. We can remember this by using an organized perspective that is firstly we can look at the vascular structures which includes the artery and the vein that is the axillary artery and axillary vein as we are talking about the axilla. Then looking at the nervous system we have the long thoracic and intercostal brachial nerves and the brachial plexus which gives rise to many nerves. So the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Then comes the lymph node that is five groups of the lymph node and finally the axillary fat and areola tissue. So firstly the vascular structures that is the artery and the vein then the nervous system structures that is the long thoracic and intercostal brachial nerves and the brachial plexus then the lymph nodes that is this axillary lymph node and finally the fat and the areola tissue. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos click on the subscribe button. To get notifications tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.